I would like to take this opportunity to pay special tribute to Mr. Alec Haley for his fantastic work, Roots. Mr. Haley has caused hundreds of people, especially blacks, all over the world to become more concerned about their heritage, their roots. After watching Mr. Haley's work and reading his work, many young people are realizing that a black man has a mind, a great heritage and that although his progress may be retarded by prejudices and hardships, he can, has, and will continue to achieve many great things. I think we ought to give Mr. Haley a big hand tonight. Come on. I'm somewhat reminded tonight of an experience I was told about a Negro slave who was a great praying Christian. You know, the slave sure enough prayed. And this particular slave's name was Charlie. And every day Charlie would go down under the hill and pray to God. And the one thing that the Negro had was close communion with God and his white boss wanted that. So one day Charlie's white master asked him how could he be so happy singing and praying and was a slave and didn't have anything, not even his freedom, while he had everything and could not sleep at night. Charlie said, Master, I talk to God, and God gives me happiness and joy. The old boss said, boy, I want you to tell me how to talk to this God you're talking about. Charlie told his boss how to pray. And that night, the prejudiced boss went down and found him a big tree and began to pray to God. His prayer went something like this. Lord, you've been hearing that Negro, now you better hear me. I want you to bless all white folk and keep all Negroes down. And by that time, Charlie had slipped down to see and hear how his boss man was coming along with his praying. He climbed up into a tree and began to listen. And he heard what the boss had said. And the Negro got a huge rock and dropped it down on his boss's head. And his boss man looked up and said, Lord, don't you know the difference between a white man and a, well, Negro? <laughs> now, selfish prayers will backfire on you. I would like tonight to look at roots. What is a root anyhow? Now, in most plants, roots are the parts that grow in the ground. A root serves two purposes. A root serves one purpose in holding the plant steadfast. And then a root serves as furnishing food sources to the plant. There are various kinds of roots. Now, there are many little branches of roots that run from the main root. There are some little tiny roots. In agriculture, we call these roots the hair roots. And these little hair roots, each one of them has a little mouth. And they take in food sources for the plant. And also, another root, I guess would be the most important root, is the tap root. 
nine, that tap root is that long root, that big root. And normally, the tap root stones up food. But now, I want to look tonight at roots from a Bible standpoint. I would like to deal with it from a Bible standpoint. Do you ever stop to think about where you came from? Have you ever thought about how the different races and nationalities came about? I want to assure you tonight that all men, women, boys, and girls are sisters and brothers. In order to do this, we will have to trace our roots a little further back than Africa. We're going to have to go a little further back than Germany. A little further than France, Italy, America, or any country. A man wanted to know from me, how did we get all messed up as far as races and colors are concerned? That's quite interesting. But my reply to him was that I don't consider the different colors and races of men messed up, but rather beautiful. They are beautiful. First of all, according to the Bible, we all came from God. And I believe it. I ought to have a witness here tonight. You see, God is the root, and it was his intention that we all be rooted in him. You see, God stood in his divinity and spoke the world into existence. God is our soul. God is the world's greatest builder and architect. He is the world's greatest artist and decorator. He designed and built the world. He painted the world and everything that's in it. For it all belongs to him. Y'all read Psalms 24. Now in Genesis 1-1, it reads something like this. In the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. And then in Genesis 1, 26 and 27, it reads, and God said, let us make man in our own image, after our own likeness, and let him have dominion over the fish of the sea, and over the fowl of the air, and over the cow, and over all the earth, and over every creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth. So God created man in his own image. In the image of God, created he him. Male and female created he them. And then I like this part of the scripture. Galatians 2, 6 and 7 reads, As ye have therefore received Christ Jesus the Lord, so walk ye in him, rooted and built up in him, and established in the faith, as ye have been taught, abound and therein with thanksgiving. So now, God, who created all things that are in heaven and earth, visible and invisible, whether they be thrones or dominions or principalities or powers, and without whom was nothing made that is made, I'm talking about God who set the sun ablazing in the heavens, started the earth on an annual journey of 500 and 58 million miles around the sun, traveling at a speed of 63,000 miles an hour. I'm talking about the God who sprinkled the night with the moon and the stars, painted the moon and the stars. He didn't stop there, but he decorated the whole world various colors. Isn't that wonderful? He saw that every living creature was beautiful was good. He really fixed up the birds. Isn't that right? He really dressed the birds up because they would be flying across the world. He painted the blue bird blue. He painted the red bird red. He painted them a black bird black. He painted them a yellow bird yellow. He painted them a peacock many colors. 
and sent them into various parts of the world. He painted the grass green, the waters blue, the clouds white and black, the roses red. He painted the lilies white, the violets blue, the song black, and in this black song, many plants and green vegetables of different colors are produced. I'm talking about God dressed up the world. Is that right? Now when he got to man, he had to sure enough do a few things different. When he got to man, the crown of his creation, he saw that nothing was wrong with him. Well, when God created man, he was perfect. It wasn't anything wrong with man. When he got through with him, he had a clear bill of health. There wasn't nothing wrong with that first man. Everything was just intact. That first man, you see, God had a way when he would create something, he would see to it that it was good. So therefore, the first man that he created didn't have no heart attacks because he had one heart beating 80 times per minute. The first man didn't have to worry about any high blood pressure because his pressure was 120 over 80. Didn't have to worry about that. The first man didn't have to worry about no low blood pressure because he had all eight pints of his blood. He didn't have to worry about being blind because he had a 2020 vision. Didn't have to worry, Reverend, about no eyeglasses because he had a 2020 vision. I wish I had a witness here. He, he, he didn't have to worry about a high temperature. The first man didn't have to worry about being burnt up with fever because his temperature was 98.6. This first man didn't have to worry about walking around on crutches. Didn't have to worry about people pushing him around in wheelchairs. Because he had all 206 of his bones. And then this first man the Lord saw to him that he had all five of his senses. He had two ears that could hear. Didn't have to worry about no hearing aid. He had two eyes that could see. He had two arms with ten fingers that could touch and feel. What did he fix up? And then he had eight sinuses and one nose to slay. He had one mouth, all 32 teeth that he could taste with. So all five of his senses were working. Look at this first man. There was nothing wrong with it. And the Lord went through with man yet. All of his systems were functioning properly. First of all, his reproductive system must have been all right because he had 24 chromosomes. 24 male and 24 female. And then uh, his respiratory system was all right. He didn't have to worry about no asthma. Didn't have to worry about no tuberculosis because he had two perfect lungs and his breathing system was all right. And then the first man didn't have to worry about uh, his circulatory system because it was perfect. And therefore, he didn't have to spend sleepless nights worrying about blood clots, leukemia, because his circulatory system was functioning properly. He didn't have to worry because his digestive system was in all. Didn't have no heartburns, no gas, no indigestion. Didn't have to worry about going to the store getting no Pepto Bismol because his di digestive system was working all right. And then this first man didn't have to worry about his endocrine system because his secreting glands were functioning properly. He didn't have to worry about his excretory system because his kidneys were working just fine. Didn't have to spend no lot of money on any kidney machine. 
machine because everything ain't working all right. Well, that first man was not nervous because his nervous system was working all right. Didn't have to walk down to the truck store and be bothered about nerve pills. He didn't have to worry about value because his nervous system was perfect. The first man, I tell you, didn't have to worry about his skeletal system because this first man was balanced. He was upright. He wasn't one side. So right there, this first man tells me that evolution needs to think again when it says that man came from a lower class animal. First man that God made was upright. I wish I had a witness. And then he didn't have to worry because his muscular system was working all right. He had strong muscles, no damage muscles. And then he didn't have to worry either about any brain tumor because he had one perfect set of brain. He didn't have to worry about no gallstones and those things that give you the blue. He had one perfect bladder and one perfect gallbladder. Man was not overweight like I am tonight, nor was he underweight like some of you are. He had one soul whose eternal destiny will be heaven or hell, and it will be determined by his roots being connected to the fresh root. God himself through Jesus Christ. Find paint with and painted a yellow man yellow and sent him to Japan. He painted a red man red and sent him to India. Is that right? Uh, he painted a white man white and sent him to England. He painted a black man black and sent him to Africa. And he told them all, so now I got you painted up. I want you to stop by the world's first barber and beauty shop and get your first hairdo. I wish I had a witness here. The white man, no doubt, got a hair straightening. The Indian got him a crew cut. The Frenchman, German, Spanish, and all of them got a hair curl. And the Negroes, I don't want none of that. I'm going to get me a, an afro. <laughs> God had already offered them to go into all of the world and replenish it. And that's when the mixed breeding started and all the mixed colors and mixed half grades and mixed races came into being. All this cross breeding. He sent his children, sisters and brothers into different parts of the world, reminding them that the world is mine, and you are mine, and therefore you are heirs to all of the world. Therefore we have no ground tonight to segregate and hate. Man, because of sin, was disconnected from the main group. This is the reason there is a world struggle for peace. Wars, nation against nation, race against race, Father against son, son against father, mother against daughter, daughter against mother, families against family. Excuse me, brother preachers, churches against churches. Many of us tonight are letting dogs and cats. I said many of us are letting dogs and cats beat us and showing love. I went up to my home up in Center, Texas. You know, I came from Center, Texas. And uh, my mother and father have many, many dogs and cats. They always have done that, hanging around the house. And here, the other month, I went up there, and believe it or not, uh, one of the, the cats had some little kittens. And did you not know those little kittens were sucking the mama dog? Now, this is a great improvement from when I was a boy, because when I was a boy, a cat had to speed up when he passed by a dog. <laughs> so dogs and cats are getting, along, are getting along. So what about us? Children, we all need to go back to our first group. God, obey his command, and our world will be better. The Apostle Paul is speaking to the people that live the 
Laodicea reminded them that they were Christians and they were to constantly walk with Christ daily. The more closely they walked with him, the more they were rooted and established in the faith. You see, if we walk with him, we become more rooted in him. Do I have with you? If we are rooted in him, we will have love, peace, joy, happiness, and finally, eternal life.
peanut. Insulation from the peanut. Explosive from the, the peanut. Plastic film from the peanut. Is that right? Illuminating all from the peanut. And everybody can say amen when we talk about peanut butter. Is that right? And uh, President Jimmy Carter had become the President of the United States because the peanut stayed connected. Is that right? And uh, as I move on here to a close the night, Lord, how much is I look at the peanut and get a great lesson out of it. And, uh, and I remember when I was a little boy, why uh, we didn't have too much of anything. And uh, you know other boys and girls used to laugh at us for bringing peanut butter sandwiches to school. And uh, I remember we used to slip behind the trees and slip and eat a peanut butter sandwich. But uh, here's a man in our day and time, because the little peanut stayed connected, he walked all the way from the peanut farm to the White House. Is that right? And uh, I'm going to have to close here tonight. But uh, I want to tell you tonight, uh, it's somebody in the building tonight. Uh, your life is mighty dim because you have disconnected yourself. Is that right? Uh, somebody used to could get happy in the church, but they have disconnected themselves from God. Is that right? Uh, somebody used to could say amen in the church. Why don't y'all pray with me here tonight? But you have disconnected yourself from God. And uh, some husband tonight used to be happy at home, but you have disconnected yourself from God. Oh, Lord. Yes, my Lord. Some wife tonight, uh, you used to be happy at home. Oh, you joy, love, peace, and happiness.